Isaiah 21, verse 4, the Bible says, My heart panted, fearfulness affrighted me. The night of my pleasure hath he turned into fear unto me. Prepare the table, watch in the watchtower. Eat, drink, arise, ye princes, and anoint the shield. For thus hath the Lord said unto me, Go, set a watchman, let him declare what he seeth. And he saw a chariot with a couple of horsemen, and a chariot of asses, and a chariot of camels. And he hearkened diligently with much heed, and he cried, A lion. My Lord, I stand continually upon the watchtower in the daytime, and I'm a set in my ward whole night. So let's pray. Father, we bless you. We thank you for the word of God, lamp unto our feet, a light unto our path. Lord, a word that settles us when we're troubled, a word that excites us, a word that comforts us, a word that convicts us, a word that draws us closer to God. And Lord, we're certainly thankful to be in the house of God tonight. Lord, we have certainly enjoyed fellowshipping with thy people we enjoyed the choir practice earlier. We enjoyed the congregational singing. We enjoyed the special singing. Lord, we enjoyed the testimonies. Lord, our heart is full tonight. And Lord, we bless you and praise you for it. Now, Lord, I pray for Miss Rhonda. Lord, you know what's going on. And I pray for her. Lord, I pray you'd undergird her. I pray that, Lord, you'd take her into your watch care. And God, I pray you'd bless her abundantly. God, I pray you'd put a hedge around her. Don't let that sorry devil beat up on her. God, I pray you'd bind him. And God, I pray that you would protect that dear saint of God. Lord, I'm thankful for the good report Sister Lynn was doing better today. I pray you'd continue to touch her and help her. Lord, it was a blessing to see Miss Mary this morning. Continue to help her with her treatments and be with her. Lord, I pray for Miss Marcy. You'd continue to... Help her to get better and strengthen her while she's still in the hospital recovering. And God, I pray that, Lord, uh, you would just bless her and help her. And I do pray for her family, Lord, that we'd see them get back in church and serve you faithfully. Father, I do thank you for what you've done for Miss Fedora. Lord, I pray you'd continue to help her. I pray for Miss Taya that, Lord, you'd help her to heal and bless her. And, Father, I pray for others that are sick that, Lord, uh, You'd touch them and help them. I pray for those that are traveling. You'd give them traveling mercies. Uh, Father, I pray for the providentially hindered like Miss May. I know she'd love to be here if she physically could. And I pray for her. I pray you'd bless her and help her. Lord, I pray now uh, you'd help us from the word of God. Uh, Father, bring unto my remembrance those things we've studied. Uh, and God, I pray that, Lord, the word of God would go forth. Uh, it edify your people. It would encourage them. It would lift them up. Uh, it would give them a little charge in their battery. Uh, God, it would cause them to go forth uh, and be the children of God you've ordained for them to be. Uh, Father, I pray that, Lord, uh, when we leave this place, uh, we'd have such a glow about us, the world would take note uh, that we not only have been to church, uh, but, Lord, we had church, uh, and the Lord met with us. Uh, Father, I pray that, Lord, you'd meet every need of every heart. Uh, I pray for those working with the children. You'd bless those, their efforts. Uh, those young children, Lord, uh, I pray they'd realize uh, the importance of the Bible lesson being taught to them. Uh, Lord, I pray if any's not been saved and they've reached the age of accountability, uh, they'd even get saved at a young age. Uh, Father, I pray for those working with the teens. Uh, Lord, I pray you'd protect those young people, those teens, uh, all that they're faced with, uh, all the peer pressure, uh, all that the devil's unleashed on young people in this country. Uh, Father, I pray that you'd insulate those people, young people. Uh, God, I pray that the word of God would lodge in their heart uh, that they might not sin against thee. Uh, Father, I certainly pray uh, for any that haven't been saved. Uh, I pray they'd get saved even tonight uh, back there in their class. Uh, Father, have your will away now. Uh, use this unworthy vessel. Uh, glorify your namesake. Uh, help your people, for it's in Jesus' wonderful name we pray. Uh, amen. Uh, 
Amen. Uh, in Isaiah chapter number 21, Israel is in captivity at Babylon. Uh, and Babylon uh, has not treated Israel very well. Uh, and can I say that God, through his prophet, uh, had sent a message uh, that God would take care of their captors. Uh, and what is about to transpire in Isaiah 21, uh, uh, Babylon is about ready to be overthrown by the Medes and the Persians. Uh, and when Babylon gets overthrown, uh, the Medes and the Persians carries Israel back to their land. Uh, but the uh, Medes and Persians uh, are good to Israel and eventually uh, lets Israel go back and be restored as a nation. Uh, we get here in verse 21, uh, we find that the prophet has sent out a message uh, and he's warning Babylon. But I want you to notice some things. Uh, first of all, notice the panic uh, in verse number 4. Uh, the Bible says, My heart panted, uh, fearfulness affrighted me. Uh, the night of my pleasure hath he turned uh, into fear unto me. They are panicking uh, because the Medes and the Persians uh, are starting to breathe down their neck. Uh, uh, listen, uh, 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 it's one thing when you are fearful. It is another thing when your fearfulness affrights you. Hmm? When your fearfulness turns into fear, that's a problem. And he said that their pleasure had turned in to fear. We see the panic. Uh, I want you to notice the preparation. Look what they say in verse number 5. Prepare the table, watch in the watchtower, eat, drink, arise ye princes, and anoint the shield, for thus hath the Lord said unto me, Go set a watchman, let him declare what he seeth. Uh, 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 my dear friends, every uh, uh, great city in those days had a big wall. Uh, the wall was their only means of defense. And on the walls, uh, they would have watchtowers where they could see afar off uh, and see if any enemy was approaching them. Uh, uh, he tells them, uh, uh, prepare a table. Uh, he tells them uh, uh, to eat because there may be a day when they're under siege and there's nothing to eat. Uh, he tells them to be... Uh, 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 prepare their armor and he tells them to get in the watchtower and declare what they see. We see the preparation. We see the panic. Now notice the proclamation. Look at verse number 7. And he saw a chariot with a couple horsemen, a chariot of asses, a chariot of camels, and he hearkened diligently with much heed, and he cried, a lion. He proclaims what he's seeing from the watchtower. Now, I want you to notice the typology in this verse, and I love typology in the Scriptures. Can I see, say he sees chariots of horsemen, asses, and camels? Anywhere you find chariots in the Bible, it is a picture of power. It is a picture of power. Not everybody had chariots. When somebody had chariots, it's power. Notice there is power of horsemen. Anytime you see horsemen, it always symbolizes a movement. Notice what he recognizes. He recognizes a powerful movement. Can I say the devil always uses powerful movements? I've sat back in the last decade or so, and I've watched powerful movements a movement called 40 Days of Purpose. And can I say that that book that many churches, including Baptist churches, embraced, if you read that booklet, matter of fact, I made a statement about it, and Brother Larry was here at the time, and he's in heaven tonight, but Brother Larry said that was a strong statement. So he went out and bought the book, he read it, and he said, Preacher, you're exactly right. That was a booklet of humanism. And it taught really not to depend on God, but it taught to depend on your own works and your own abilities. That was a powerful movement. Can I say, you say, preacher, what did it move? It moved people farther away from God. Every movement the devil has always seeks to move people away from God. There was a movement that came out a few years ago called What Would Jesus Do? And again, that movement was about works. That movement was about being better to mankind. That movement was all about what you can do to merit God's favor. Let me help you with that. Nothing. There's nothing we can do to merit God's favor. We get God's favor 
because of what Christ did for you and I. And again, it was a powerful movement. It led many young people away. I remember seeing young person after young person wearing those little rubber bracelets with WWJD. Where are those young people at today? Can I say as early as a few weeks ago, another powerful movement happened at a college down in Lexington, outside of Lexington, Asbury College. And even the nightly news was talking about this wonderful movement of God. Listen, a movement of God does not have women casting demons out of people in front of people. God will never move contrary to His Word. And I still believe that women are not to usurp authority over the man. Amen. That's Bible. I do believe God said he's not the author of confusion. That's Bible. 1 Corinthians 14. You'll find it. huh? But what I'm saying is horsemen represents a movement. Satan's always got a movement. And again, the movement is always designed to move people farther away from God. We could talk about secular movements and all kinds of things there. But horsemen represent a movement. Can I say asses always represent a burden. There is power and a burden. You say, what kind of burdens are you talking about? Well, you know what a burden will do in your life. But I'm talking about national powerful movements and national powerful burdens. Burdens like war. You can't convince me that George W. Bush would have got reelected had it not been for 9-11. Can I say there's never been a time when a sitting president, when we were at war, where a sitting president didn't get reelected? Because people are afraid to change the status quo. War can be a burden on a nation. It's a burden when mamas and daddies send their young uh, uh, men off over to a foreign country and they come back in a casket. It's a burden when uh, 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 machine factories and, and manufacturing factories no longer make what they're supposed to make because they're making weapons of war. It's a burden. I thought about this. Uh, uh, how about the burden of recession? Hmm? Yeah. Amen. Nobody likes recessions. Hmm? But a recession puts a nation under a burden. And if they don't get this inflation under control, that's exactly where we're headed. Can I say this? How about the burden of a pandemic? Mm. Again, there's power in burdens. There's power for some to gain, but there's also power in those who lose. We see asses represent a burden. There's also chariots of camels. Camels represent two things in scriptures. They represent pro uh, prosperity. If you've got a, a man who's wealthy, got a lot of camels, he's prosperous. But most of the time, when you're looking at a national effort, it represents activity. And there's power in activity. Mm -hmm. Anybody ever hear of March Madness? I know people take off work. I know people don't miss a game. I know people that get all, you know, just tore up over them brackets they fill out. There's power in that. Hmm? And people play on that. Can I say there's all kinds of power and activity? Not only in the sports arena. I mean, you know, Super Bowl, that's a whole thing. And, and you get into uh, college playoffs and all that stuff. There's power in that, but there's power in a lot of activity. Why do you think it is designed by the devil to make you get wore out because you don't have enough hours in the day? Now, some of us that got gray hair remember when Sunday was the Lord's Day. When I first started driving, I know I'm old. If you didn't buy gas by 5 o'clock on Saturday, you didn't get it till Monday morning. Unless you knew a farmer that had some tanks. Thank the Lord I had a buddy that was a farmer. But he was one most of the time using all my gas. But anyway, I remember a time when things were slower. I remember sitting on front porch, front porch and watching traffic go by. That was an event. Huh? Now, you don't want to hear traffic go by. I remember in Florence when you could get through the whole town in about two minutes. When Miss Annette and I got married, 18, that wasn't no big deal. 
42 wasn't no big deal. Huh? Where Kroger's and Frisch's and UDF and all that is out there on 18 right there at Limeburg, that was a big farm where we used to get hay for dad's dogs. Hmm? I can remember Houston Road was just a two-lane with nothing but farmland. I remember when Florence was just a little town wrapped around a mall. Now the mall's the joke. So what are you saying? I'm saying activity. Everybody is busy, 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 busy. busy. I even know churches have something go on every night of the week. You know what that's a, 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 a strategy for? Burnout. Because hmm? people don't have enough time as it is. Hmm? So we see that there is these chariots represents power, and there's power in movements, power in burdens, power in activity. And all of it is designed to take you farther and farther away from God. You know why these pews aren't filled tonight? Because there are a lot of people got something going on. I remember when church was what was going on. Mm -hmm. But then notice in verse 8, he cries, a lion. And we know what the lion represents. 1 Peter 5, 8, be sober, be vigilant, because your adversary the devil, as a roaring lion, walketh about, seeking whom he may devour. He sees the lion, it represents the devil. And can I say that if you look at this in verse 7, he sees and he hearkens to the chariots of horsemen, of asses, and of camels. He sees and hearkens. Hearkens means to listen. You know the song, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. It means to listen. So he sees and he listens to the movements. But he cries when he sees the lion. Can I say? Somebody needs to start crying. Too many people are watching and listening to the movements and they're not focusing and crying out about the lion. Hmm? The lion's the real danger. Hmm? With all that said, and in lieu of all that, I'm interested in verse number 5 where he says, anoint the shield. With God's help, I want to preach on anoint the shield. Hmm? Now listen, there are two types of shields back in Bible days. There's a body shield, and there's an arm shield. Body shield, they'd stand behind. Arm shield, they wore on their arm. Can I say this? The body shield was called a battle shield. And uh, if you've ever watched any of them gladiator movies or any of them old movies like that, uh, what they would do is they would interlock those battle shields. And they would set themselves a wall to hide behind. Uh, or they'd all crunch behind and lock those battle shields together. And those battle shields uh, would protect them. And what they'd do is they'd submerge them into water. Uh, and those battle shields would quench fiery arrows that would come their way. And then you had the arm shields. The arm shields were beaten metal that they wrapped in badger skins. And uh, 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 they, they would do what they said here where it said anoint the shield. They would not soak those badger skins in water. They would anoint them with oil. And what would happen when they had those shields anointed with the oil, uh, when arrows would come their way and they'd be hiding by them, arrows would bounce off of them uh, 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 because the oil uh, would make that leather very pliable, make it almost springy, uh, and they'd bounce off of them. If you did not anoint your shield, the leather, leather would dry out and crack, and arrows would penetrate that beaten metal. And many of them died because they did not have their shields anointed. Think of it like this. Winter time, if you don't put hand cream on your hands, your hands are going to get dried out. In any activity at all, they're going to crack. I put lotion on my hands and they still crack. I do it a couple times a day, they still crack. I got cracks in my fingers right now because I have perpetually dry skin. Miss Annette says my skin's like leather. Huh? What a blessing. No. Oh. You know, you all think i got the height of a horse. But anyway, if you would allow your shield to dry out, it may cause the death of you. You know what's wrong with a lot, of, a lot of Christians? Your shields have gotten dry. You can't quench the fiery darts of the devil. 
and they're destroying people and Satan's picking people off left and right. He's got them caught up in movements and the lion shows in and he gets them. We need to anoint the shield. Now listen, the shield represents faith. We know in the whole armor of God in Ephesians 6, the shield of faith. And the oil represents the Holy Ghost. And can I say, we need our faith energized by the Holy Spirit of God so that we don't die in battle, but that we become victorious in battle. If we're going to have revival, if we're going to see a movement of God and not one of the devil, somebody needs to anoint their shield, and tonight would be a good night for it. huh? You say, preacher, how do we anoint our shields? I'm glad you asked. First of all, you anoint your shield uh, by Scripture. The Bible says in Romans 10, 17, So then faith cometh by hearing, hearing by the Word of God. You want to anoint your shield? You want the Holy Ghost on your faith? Uh, you've got to get in the Bible. Uh, and if you get in the Bible and you let the Bible get in you, uh, your faith will go strong. Uh, uh, the Holy Ghost will show up. Uh, and every time the devil uh, has you in his bullseye, uh, your faith will cause you to be victorious. Uh, you can anoint your shield through the Scriptures. Uh, can I say this? You can anoint your shield through supplication, through praying, uh, and getting a hold of the Holy Ghost. Uh, uh, Phil, uh, Philippians 4, 6 says, Be careful for nothing but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving. Let your requests be known unto God. Uh, it means pray for everything. Uh, it means be thankful for everything. Uh, you ought to never do anything without bathing it in prayer. Uh, Ephesians 6, 18, Praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit uh, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication uh, for all saints. Uh, listen, uh, uh, Romans uh, uh, 8 tells us that there are times uh, when you're praying uh, and the Holy Ghost itself, Himself becomes your mediator, your intercessor uh, when He takes what's in your heart uh, unto God. Uh, listen, uh, it don't matter if you sing every song in tune. Uh, if your heart is in tune, uh, God recognizes what's in your heart. Uh, it don't matter if your prayer has all the words just right. Uh, if your praying from your heart uh, God sees your heart uh, it don't even matter if you preach uh, like Billy Sunday preached uh, if you're preaching uh, and your heart's right with God uh, God sees the intents of your heart uh, friends we need to pray uh, and get the Holy Ghost on the scene uh, and anoint our shields uh, so we can overcome what the devil's got thrown at us uh, can I say you anoint your shield with scripture you anoint your shield with supplication. You anoint your shield with submission. We don't like that word. James 4, 7 says, Submit yourselves therefore to God. Resist the devil and he'll flee from you. You know why the devil camps in some of y'all's backyard? Because you don't resist him. If you resist him, he gets tired of beating on you and he goes somewhere else. And the only way you can resist him is if you've got an anointed shield. You've got to have the Holy Ghost on your faith mm -mm. listen without faith it's impossible to please God but through faith uh, 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 mountains are subject unto you in your prayer life are you listening a lot of your mountain uh, molehills become mountains uh, but your mountains could become molehills if you've got enough faith uh, we find that submission is a great tool You'll never have the Holy Ghost blessing. You'll never have faith. You'll never be able to overcome anything the devil throws at you as long as you're in charge of your life. But if you learn to submit to the Lord and let Him have it, friend, there's nothing you can't overcome. Hmm? Listen, I may, not, I may not have a lot of qualities and I may not have a, a lot of strength and I may not have a lot of things, but one thing I do is I believe God. And a lot of people wonder, how in the world, preacher, can you get back up and preach? And how can you do this after that surgery? How can? Because I just believe in God. Mm. And if you get God big enough on the inside of you, He's going to come out of you in some some way, shape, or form, huh? Listen, you anoint your shield through the Scripture, through supplication, through submission, but also through seeking Christ. Mm. If you seek Him, you're going to bump into Him, because He says, "Seek and you shall find." But uh, uh, listen to this verse and see if this doesn't help your faith. Hebrews 12, 2, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. When you got born again, he wrote your name down in the Lamb's Book of Life. He became the author of your faith. 
And one of these days you're going to see him as he is, and that'd be the finish of your faith, because you're going to ever be with the Lord. Uh, but he's the one that helps your faith, uh, and it's grown when you're looking unto him, looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, uh, despising the shame, uh, and is set down on the right hand of the throne of God. Uh, listen, the cross was horrible, uh, and he despised the shame, uh, but there was joy in Jesus going to Calvary. Uh, what was the joy? You and I. Uh, he went to Calvary uh, so we could be saved. Uh, and he looked ahead in time and saw you putting your faith in him. Uh, and he said, Father, it's worth it. Uh, and my dear friends, when you look to him, you'll find that whatever trial you're going through is worth it. It'll increase your faith. He'll anoint your shield. Uh, seeking Christ will help you. And something else that will anoint your shield and we as Baptists do not like this stepping out farther than you've ever stepped before we like being comfortable we like sitting down crossing our arms and saying I've arrived I'm not going any farther and Lord good luck moving me You know it would be a real blessing where we would step out farther than we've ever stepped before. See, because we've got little lines that we know. I can get there. I can handle that. I can believe God to that point. But going on before, farther than we've ever went before, well, I don't know if God can help me out there. I've never experienced that I can handle being in the kitty end of the pool with the floaties on, but you want me to take the floaties off and jump out in the deep end? No, I don't know that I can handle it. Why don't you try it? Because you'll find the same Jesus that can help you there, he'll help you out here. Matter of fact, he might bless you real good out here. You might realize you don't need the floaties. You've gotten off the milk of the word. You're on the meat of the word. Hmm? You know what I'd like to see? I'd like to see the Lord upset our comfort zone so much that not only do you sit in a different seat but you move up closer poor brother Clint gets spit on every service he needs some relief wouldn't it be a blessing when folks tune in tonight they didn't see empty pews up here see cause they can't see you all in the back all they see is his bald spot showing up on the back of his head that's all they're seeing right now wouldn't it be a blessing to see some other bald heads huh Say, what do I need to do? You need to step out farther than you've ever stepped. Well, I've never sat in the front row. You try it. You might like it. Hmm? it it's not liver. <laughs> Hush. Only weird guys eat liver. Huh? Man, we went to a restaurant not long ago. Brother Sammy, he ordered liver. I sat at the other end of the table. Boss hog. Huh? No, why don't you try getting out of your comfort zone? Yeah. Why don't you try witnessing to somebody on the job that you, you think will never, ever get saved? Why don't you try giving a little bit more to missions than you normally give? Why don't you just, uh, you know what? <laughs> boy, I got on money, oh boy. <laughs> but Bob, Brother Charlie taught me this. And if you all didn't ever meet Charlie Miller, you meet him in heaven. What a card he was. Yeah. Brother Charlie taught me this when I was a young preacher. He said every time he had troubles, car troubles, washing machine troubles, he'd tell Miss Judy, we'll give a little bit more on our offering. He said, because well, we need the Lord's help in this. Every time. They needed new windows in their house. He said, Judy, we can't afford windows. Because you've got to understand, Charlie and Judy didn't tithe in the first place. Tithing was a disgrace to them. They sacrificially gave. And they gave to missions. And they gave in a, in a lot of ways to people and a lot of things. But every time something would come up, he'd get, just give more on his offering. He, he, they needed windows in his house. And Brother Charlie just told Judy, he said, you better put some more money on our offering every week. We need some windows. Now, I'm, I, as, as God is my witness that I'm standing in the middle of the church house, it wasn't a few weeks after they started doing that, and Delta Airlines contacted Brother Charlie, Miss Judy, 
And Delta Airlines, they'd done a study and they realized where their planes were flying across at that time, one was taken off and landing about every 18 seconds, uh, they realized there was so much noise where Judy and Charlie lived that uh, uh, they uh, was going to get sued by a lot of people. So they contacted uh, Brother Charlie, Miss Judy, and said, if you don't sue us, we'll put new windows, new doors, we'll totally soundproof your house with special insulation, and it won't cost you a dime. Uh, you say, how in the world did that happen? Uh, Charlie didn't know the head of Delta Airlines, but God knew how to get a hold of Ed. Hey, hey I'm just telling you, uh, why don't you step out farther than you've ever been before? Uh, why don't you just give a little bit more to God? Uh, why don't you just put forth a little more effort for God? Uh, do a little more for God uh, and see if the blessings of God don't get bigger and sweeter. Now, don't put $15 extra in tonight and expect to get a new house tomorrow. But he might. You say, was Charlie gambling with God? No, Charlie just believed God would take care of him. And he read over there in Malachi where it said, Prove me now. If I won't open the windows of heaven, pour out a blessing you couldn't contain. And listen, I'm telling you, Charlie did that for everything. And, and he, he was a blessed man. Why? He was a happy man. Why? Because God didn't forsake him. You want oil on your shield? Step out a little farther than you've ever stepped before. Trust God a little more than you've ever trusted Him before. Seek Him like you've never sought Him before. Huh? I thought about this. You want oil on your shield? Shoulder the load of another. Mm -mm. Galatians 6.2 Bear ye one another's burdens and so fulfill the law of Christ. We've gotten, as I said this morning, this me mentality. If we'll start looking at others and seeing if there's somebody else we can help and we try and help shoulder their burden, you'll find the blessing of God in bearing one another's burdens and so fulfilling the law of Christ. As a pastor, you don't know what it did for my heart when Miss Renee was singing that beautiful song and without being prompted, without having a cheerleading leader, without having a worship leader, Ladies just started popping up and going back and loving on Miss Rhonda. That did wonders for this pastor's heart. What a blessing to have folks that discern and that care and that are willing to be a blessing to somebody else. Huh? So many people are like, Lord, feed me. Thanks be unto God for some. Lord, what can I do for thee? Hmm? Huh? But when you learn to shoulder the burden of somebody else, you'll find you'll you'll have oil on your shield. Listen, I know you all don't believe me. That's all right. I very seldom ever pray for anything for myself. Now, I did pray that the Lord would give Miss Taya safe delivery and her and the baby would be healthy. But for me personally, very seldom do I ever pray for anything. But I spend time praying for you all and your needs that I know of and your cares that I know of now, I've learned, walking with the Lord all these years, if I spend time being concerned about others, I don't have to worry about myself. The Lord takes care of me. And it would help some of you if you'd quit looking at yourself and you'd start praying for others and being a blessing to others and seeking to be good to others because you know what you're going to find? The Lord will be good to you. He's promised, read the Bible. He's promised in Matthew chapter 6 to meet all of our needs. Uh, 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 you don't have to worry about clothes and raiment. You don't have to worry about food on your table. Well, you don't have to worry about your bills being paid. Uh, as long as you put God first uh, and you seek His face. Uh, and then when you start uh, looking to be a blessing to others, you'll find uh, He puts it in, press down, shake it over, bubble it over. Will men give in your bosom? Uh, it's a blessing when we get our eyes off ourselves and we start seeing there are people that are hurting if you help shoulder their burden sometimes it's nothing more than a kind gesture a simple text, text message a prayer in the midnight just something to help somebody else you'll be amazed how God anoints your shield thought about this you anoint your shield by showing up in the battle. A lot of people like to retreat. 
If I had a dollar for every person that said, Preacher, I'm with you, I'd have more dollars than I got now. Because it amazes me when the heat gets on, you find out who's real. Hmm? Let me help you with something. Go back and read Daniel chapter 3. When Nebuchadnezzar stood, stood up that statue and told everybody they better worship him or he was taking their head off, all of Israel worshipped that statue except Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. I didn't see a mass of people running to jump in the fire with them, but they found the Lord faithful in the furnace. What can I say? There are a lot of people, boy, they got a lot of talk until it's the battle time. Hmm? I've watched a little bit when I was in the hospital, especially this March Madness, and it amazed me a lot of the teams that were expected to win didn't win because they just thought they was going to win. But some of them underdogs showed up to the battle. First time in, and that I can ever remember that uh, at least one of the number one seeds isn't going to be in the final four. I mean, they all got knocked off. Huh? And uh, Florida Atlantic University, who ever heard of that school? Hmm? Say, so what happened? They showed up. Hmm? Uh, uh, Clark Kellogg, uh, who played at Ohio State back in my days, he said, Xavier's going to Final Four. Well, somebody ought to tell Xavier to show up. Yeah. They got it handed to them yesterday. Huh? I mean, they didn't get whipped. They got big-time whipped. They got redneck whipped, man. I mean, they got it handed to them. Why? They didn't show up. I wonder how many's going to show up for a revival. The battle. Our church may be hanging in the balances. Who's going to show up and be accounted? Hmm? Huh? Listen, I admire a man in the Bible named Uriah. Uriah was one of David's mighty men. David betrayed him. He betrayed him by taking his wife Bathsheba. And then when she was found with child, he wanted to cover it up. He had Uriah come in from the battle. So he could be with his wife so they could say, oh, she got pregnant when you came in that night. But Uriah had so much character. He said, my, my countrymen that are out there fighting can't be with their wives. I won't be with my wife. What character? So he sent him back out. And David said, when the heat of the battle gets on, just draw back. Leave Uriah out there by himself. David had him killed. But go and read it. Uriah, being a seasoned man of war, he saw everybody else retreating. But he didn't retreat. He loved God, and he loved his king who betrayed him so much he went down a fighting. He went down swinging. He showed up for the battle. Listen, if I go down, I want to go down swinging. Hmm? I don't want to limp into heaven. I want to go out in a blaze of glory. Are you listening? Let me give you some ver verses. In Ezekiel 13, 5, it says, You have not gone up into the gaps neither made up the hedge for the house of Israel to stand in the battle on the day of the Lord. A lot of them didn't show up in Israel's day. Ezekiel twenty-two thirty, And I sought for a man among them that should make up the hedge and stand in the gap before me for the land that I should not destroy it. But I found none. I wonder when God's looking at this abominable country that we live in and God's looking at churches and he's looking for a church to stand up and make up the hedge. Is he finding any? Well, our church, show up in the battle. You want oil on your shield? Show up for the battle. And I thought about this lastly. You get oil on your shield by sharing the gospel. Romans 1.16, Paul said, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also the Greek. 2 Corinthians 4, verse 3, But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world hath blinded the minds of them which believe not, lest the glorious light of the gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. Why the movements were going on in verse number 7, the watchman was just watching, looking at it, and listening. And that's what the world's doing. And Satan has used movements to blind the world so they don't see the lion. And can I say, 
the glorious light of the gospel exposes the devil and his movements and shows people where they're headed for eternity and shows them how they can be saved. We've got to share the gospel. When you share the gospel, God anoints your shield. Without oil on your shield, you lose your defense. You know why a lot of Christians are being picked off? No oil on their shield. Preachers falling. Why? No oil on their shield. Sunday school teachers falling. Why? No oil on their shield. Hmm? Choir singers and deacons and treasurers and lay people falling like flies because no oil on their shield. No oil on your shield, you lose your defense. No oil on your shield, you, lo you lose your discernment, your understanding. You'll fall for the tricks of the devil. You'll fall in the snares of the devil because you can't see the way of escape because you have no oil on your shield. You're looking through natural eyes, not spiritual eyes. And when you don't have any oil on your shield, you lose your direction. A lot of people are spiraling out of control without a clear path for the will of God in their life because they don't have any oil on your shield. Tonight, I exhort you to get all the oil on your shield you can and be a vessel of honor for Jesus Christ. You'll never, ever be dissatisfied living for Jesus. Let's all stand. Brother Ray, come get a song of invitation. I just ask you a question. You have oil on your shield? A lion's coming. There's a movements right now, but a lion's coming. Have you got oil on your shield? While they're picking out a song, let's pray. Father, we love you. Thank you for the scriptures. Thank you, Lord, for the thought. God, help us to have oil on our shields. We need oil in our lamps. And, oils on our, and oil on our shields. So God, help us, prepare us, equip us, put a hedge about us, but God, use us for your honor and for your glory. Lord, help oil on our shields lead to folks being saved. Lord, bless now. Help folks to realize if their shields dry and cracked, to come and get some oil. Those that, Lord, have oil, Help them to come and get some more. That God, we might be the church you'd have us to be. Blessing this invitation. Speak to hearts. Well, thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Did you know that you could receive a daily devotion every morning in your inbox? Head on over to ibcflorence.com and click on Daily Devotions to sign up today. And as always, thanks for listening.